Hello everyone, welcome back to Fun Ahead TV. Today's video is actually the next video uh, following uh, the one where we completely tore down the engine. Uh, so we started out, we took the engine out. If you missed that, um, please go back and watch it. Um, and then the, in the next video, uh, we took a lot of things apart. We took a lot of things apart. Uh, we took the, basically, uh, the flywheel clutch assembly off, and then we took apart the entire, we took off the, the timing cover, we took out the cams, we took out, which, you know, in the variable cam solenoid, which is part of that assembly, when you take everything out all together. Um, what I didn't show on camera, and that was, I'll explain in a second, was the uh, lifter carrier, which goes uh, basically on top of the valves here. That sits right here. I took that out um, because today actually was just a big cleaning day. Uh, so I didn't actually film any of that because it was freaking boring. Just me uh, with my uh, bucket parts cleaner back here, uh, just sitting there with some uh, mineral spirits, freaking burning my lungs out. But we got we got everything really clean everything that was oily and we took apart uh, we got it all cleaned up um, so that's good and then and then i went nuts cleaning everything in here it's still kind of oily but of course we want this entire surface to be per perfectly clean um and everything in in inside of course. i mean there was just oil sitting here previously so you know cleaning that up in preparation to uh, start putting it back together. Uh, now I am going bank by bank with this. Um, so to take apart the other bank, we have to be 360 degrees forward uh, by the, via the crank so that the cams for bank two will be in their top dead center orientation. And of course we could take, we could do that now, um, but I'd rather just one bank at a time you know, now, right now, bank one is in its top dead center orientation. Then we'll do everything with it, put it back together. Then we'll move to bank two. So like I said, did that today. And actually, I'll show you guys. Let's go back and look at the parts. Under this freaking huge amount of shop cloths is my somewhat cleaned up valve cover. I spent actually a lot of time. This is... 100% better than it was. Um, all this is just really on there. Um, so please don't hate too heavily. The underside of it though, as you can see, is spotless clean. Super nice. And then here's the lifter carrier. Uh, we spent a good amount of time cleaning it. Um, so right now, they're just kind of... Don't want to damage parts. But what we're doing today is we are going to take apart the timing chain guides. The entire purpose of tearing the engine down like this was to eventually get to the timing chain guides, both the Vario cams, uh, both for the Vario cams and for the uh, the main timing chains going to the intermediate shaft. So, I won't string you along anymore. Without further ado, let's compress the Vario cam solenoid and uh, see how these look for bank one. I just got the uh, Vario cam solenoid taken out, as you can see. Um, I ended up using uh, Porsche Special Tool 9632 to compress um, the upper and lower portions of Varicam solenoid. Just to show you what that looks like, that is this right here. I actually bought it off of eBay. Um, a guy on eBay recreates these. This isn't the actual Porsche tool. Um, pretty much it's just uh, a piece of aluminum stock rod stock that he reverse threaded which is exactly what this part requires it is reverse threaded um, and then also reverse threaded nut here um, so basically it just connects these two or screws in here and then you just thread down your nut and then it compresses the two and you can take this out very easily so that's that tool what do these vario cam pads look like whoops i almost just dropped them so um the top one actually uh, basically was perfect we're starting to see a little bit you know you, I can like feel 
the score marks a little bit from where the chain was running. Uh, basically, once this top layer starts to wear away, then the material below that wears away much more quickly. Um, so that's what eventually causes these uh, to reach their demise. But you can see, okay, I think you can see in the camera, and how did I get the, the light just right? You can see that there's some score lines in it, uh, but not terrible. That being said, this is the bottom one. And the bottom one, are the bottom ones are the ones that are notorious for um, excessive wear, at least for bank one. Anyway, the oil fed ones, basically, as so you can see the bottom here, there is an oil feed line there, which is why there is a an O-ring on the bottom of this one because it uh, seals there so that oil can be um, pressurized out of these holes. But you can see, um, not only do we have those score marks like we saw uh, on the top one, but we also have some uh, pitting. So we can definitely see that this one um, was starting to go. I was definitely seeing some, you know, this material uh, in my oil filter. It's interesting how this wears, to be honest. Um, you can see, like, it chunks away, you know, which makes total sense why basically once it starts to happen, once the wear starts to happen, like, you have these hard edges that the chain just eats at, you know, repeatedly over and over and over and over. And then, of course, it would make sense that it would just eat this part alive. So... Anyway, uh, we're definitely, definitely getting some, getting a score mark here, and then all these, all this pitting uh, eventually would have completely torn this, this piece just completely apart. Definitely time to replace these guys. Next, we can look at what the actual um, timing chain guides looked like, the guide and the tensioner. Okay, so like I said, uh, let's take a look at what the timing chain guide and what the tensioner guide uh, actually look like. Uh, for bank one, the top one here, sorry, I'm like not even pointing at that. So there's the tensioner, in case you didn't see it, the, the timing chain guide is on top here. Um, and then for bank two, it's flipped, it's actually the exact opposite. The guide is on the bottom and the tensioner uh, is on the top. Um, but so to get this guide out um, We have to remove This bolt here and the cylinder head and then this one here and then to get the tensioner guide out We will remove that guy So let's uh, go ahead and do that and then see what these look like <laughs> Okay, so we can look at this closer later, but this is what a 100,000 mile um, timing chain guide looks like. And actually there's some pretty good pitting on this. And this is the one that doesn't even really take much force. So yeah, there is definitely some pretty good wear on this. It is time to go for this guy. It does make me worried uh, about the IMS tensioner, so we can't get to that unless we split the case, which is unfortunate. All right, so now that we have the uh, tensioner, timing chain guide, and then the, uh, the actual guide um, out of the car, now it's time to play a game of what in the world is in my oil filter? And the answer to that is this. This is what's been in my oil filter. You can see the stripe, or the three stripes going down it um, from the, uh, this is a double, double chain. So it's going down the entire uh, length of it. But then at the bottom here, we kind of have a pressure point, obviously, for the uh, tensioner side. And uh, we can see that it's um, it's got some scoring in there for sure. This is, this is a hard material, but we can see that uh, 
it's not been aging too well. Um, so it's definitely time to change these out. Let's look at the other one here. So yeah, looking at the the one that takes supposedly the least, least amount of pressure, uh, we can still see, sorry if it would focus, if I could hold it in front of the camera for one. Definitely time to do these guys. So I'm glad we've, uh, I'm, I'm glad we're looking at this now. It's kind of made, these have kind of made it a little more worthwhile. I mean, of course, you know, looking at, at this Variocam pad, obviously it is wearing and needs to be done. But I was like, man, that's all the wear that's on those. But you know, we're seeing, you know, this is clearly, uh, this is clearly some wear. And so these need to be replaced. Um, I've decided to kind of skip ahead, um, not so chronologically, uh, and go ahead and show everyone what the bank two timing chain guides looked like. Now, in this point in the video, I just showed you what all of the Bank 1 timing chain guides looked like. I showed you that on the top Vario Cam solenoid pad, uh, there was some pitting. Um, and as I also said, I was going to do the banks in series. So the engine is actually already together at this point, and it's actually back in the car. At the point in time when I filmed the what I just showed you for the Bank 1, of course I didn't have Bank 2 timing chain guides out yet. So anyway, we're skipping ahead and I just want to be able to show you all of them in the same video. So let's go ahead and do that. Starting with the Bank 2 um, guide, the, the primary guide. As you can see, there's consistent with Bank 1, there's a little bit of pitting here, um, but not it's not terrible. The tensioning guide, um, again, you can kind of see some scoring up and down it, and then there's some pitting here at the top. Also consistent with bank one, but actually bank one, as you can see, was worse. The Variocam pads is where this gets very interesting. So for the, the solenoid um, on bank one, the top pad is the non-oil fed one and the bottom pad is the oil fed one. Bank two is actually the opposite. Um, the bottom pad is the non-oil fed one, um, which you can see here. And you can see that it has some scoring in it, um, but it's actually not terrible. There's one little spot here where there's some pitting, but it's not the end of the world. Um, this pad obviously had some, uh, some life left in it. This is a scratch mark I put in it when I was taking everything apart, so never mind that. Um, the top pad, the oil-fed pad, as you can see, as I showed you, is not so good. Not so good. And you can see here, of course, this is supposed to be perfectly smooth. And it's not supposed to have any gouges in it whatsoever. And actually, when I took the um, Bank 2 valve cover off, I could immediately see um, that the chain was recessed pretty significantly into this um, guide. And to the point where basically the, uh, the rivets that go through the chain to hold each link together um, were nearly touching this top surface. So it was receded that much. And you can... You can see like it's deeper than my fingernail depth here. There was some significant pitting going on here and this guide uh, did not have much life left in it. It does make me wonder how much longer I could have run this before it would have completely disintegrated. Um, but as I mentioned, of course, once this top layer begins to wear away, sharp edges created by the pitting um, and the softer material below the top surface um, it just starts to get eaten away and eaten away at a much quicker rate. And then, interestingly, I noticed this this large chunk out of the uh, out of the guide, and I found that actually in my oil pan um, when I was draining the oil to do this entire project. As you can see, this piece perfectly fits right here. Um, so, yeah. Pieces like that, I mean, th this happened in the last 3,000 miles, like this huge chunk out of here, um, because last time I did my oil change, uh, I did, obviously, a, this huge chunk was not there. So this thing was starting to deteriorate at a very rapid rate, and I'm very happy and thankful that I am doing this job now and not waiting any longer. Alrighty then, well, that is going to be it for today. Um, I just wanted to get through showing you the status of all of the timing chain guides and you can now see um, that there was obviously some significant damage. It was time to do these. Now we've got the fresh ones back up in the engine. So in the next video, uh, we'll walk through the process of 
putting um, everything back together and retiming uh, each each cylinder head and getting the engine all back in time and good to go. Uh, and then we'll move on from there to putting the engine completely back up in the car and starting it. Thank you so much for tuning in to Funhead TV. If you like content like this and enjoy seeing um, how it's done and the woes of my particular vehicle, please um, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in to Funhead TV, and I will see you guys next time.